my big break was when Brian McLeod auditioned for Rick Dufay's band. And I played with Brian McLeod and he looked at me and he goes, whoa, you're world class, man. I love your feel. Let's swap numbers. Most of the session work I do extends from that. The other big break was playing on an Aerosmith record in the 80s for Jack Douglas, being the guy that he called to play on some unfinished tracks on a record called Rock in a Hard Place. A guy named Jim Ed Norman, who is now retired, who was since 81, I believe, the president of Warner Brothers Nashville, got his own publishing company happening. And in the Motown building on Sunset, he had a room up there that was just strictly for doing demos and a little tape machine of some sorts. And I was hired just to go and um, have an acoustic guitar up there and do these demos for him. And after uh, maybe a few months uh, of, of that, uh, he called me in his office one day and he said, I've been listening to what you've been doing and uh, it, it sounds really good. And, and if you find a really bright Martin D18 uh, acoustic guitar, I can use you on some major sessions. He said, because all my guitar players, all acoustic guys, all have a bright Martin D18. He says, that's the sound I like. Okay. So I spent about a month looking for one. I found one and uh, called him up. I said, I think I've got one. And he said, okay, meet me at Producer's Workshop on Hollywood Boulevard. It was a major studio happening at the time. And uh, this was, I think, 1979 or 80. So I met him there. And uh, the artist was Michael Martin Murphy. And... Um, he had uh, several big-time uh, acoustic guitar players, uh, session players at that time there, and a full rhythm section. And uh, I showed up with my guitar, and all these guys were there. And he says, okay, guys, bring out your Martin D-18s. And they had trunks full of all kinds of acoustics. And they brought those out, and they passed mine around. They played theirs, and they gave it the thumbs up. And he goes, okay. And he said to the engineer, Eric, go set Randy up in this booth over here. And that was the start. Uh, it was my first really big, big record date. Another one was getting hired by the late, great Joe Beck, uh, one of the unsung heroes of jazz guitar, who was a formidable studio musician who could play a variety of different idioms of music. He had been Paul Simon's musical director, Frank Sinatra's musical director, not a household name, but known to musicians. And I lived with him in New York when I was very young, and he would take me to sessions and he'd say, always bring your bass because your time is going to come. Will Lee couldn't make a, a date. And I was in the control room and Joe said, well, let Paul play. And I looked in the room and it was the who's who of 70s New York studio musicians. And I was really young and he beckoned me in and, he said, and I sat down in the chair next to him. And I looked around, and everybody looked at me and it was like, well, you're on, kid. Here we go. And it was an Olympic Lottery Commission jingle for the 1978 Olympics, and I cut it. And I sat down and played it because I had been listening to them play it for about 15 minutes. It was a 20-minute jingle, triple-scale jingle date. They were going to crank out a jingle live in 20 minutes, and they waited till minute 17 for Will. And I sat in the chair at 18, and then they went into a possible 20. They went over 20 minutes over, which was fine. And uh, that was one of my first sessions.